Ty Detmer joins us live from Texas. Ty, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How are things going, man? Things are good. Down here beating the heat in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Ty, yeah. we, we have uh, come up with five criteria that we believe go into uh, establishing a legendary BYU quarterback. You fit all five of those five categories. What do you feel like a quarterback has to do to be included in that BYU quarterback factory? Oh, um, I don't know. That's hard to say. You know, each each team's a little different. Each year's a little different. And uh, I think for the most part, you know, I think you got to, you know, string a couple of years together that, um, you know, you've really kind of taken the team on your back and, uh, and uh, you know, played – played really well so uh, I know there's been guys you know Max Hall and John Beck have, have done that uh, you know I think Taysom you know, will do that uh, you know last year was first big year and, and uh, he puts another year like that uh, obviously you know he's an exciting player to watch and, and one that people really are looking forward to uh, seeing this year again. What kind of skill set do you see with Taysom Hill uh, that gives him an opportunity to be considered uh, one of the best that BYU's had? Well, I think just uh, his athleticism, you know. Uh, he's really improved uh, throughout the year last year as a passer, and I think part of that was just, uh, you know, Coach and I and Beck uh, getting a feel for what he does well and him getting a feel for what's expected. You know, he really didn't have much of an off season last year with a knee injury, so... Uh, he just really progressed as he went on, and then his ability to uh, make things happen with his feet when either things break down or uh, design zone read type of uh, plays that you know are now more prevalent. You know, I think a guy like Steve Young would have been uh, awesome in that type of offense, especially in college football. So, uh, you know, Taysom's just got got a little bit of everything that uh, you know he can take out there and. and whatever the defense is taken away, he could beat them with the other. So, um, you know, he's just a very dynamic, exciting player to watch. Ty Detmer with us on BYU Sports Nation, 1990 Heisman Trophy winner, played 14 years in the NFL. Ty, Taysom is enjoying some serious preseason hype uh, when it comes to Heisman Trophy consideration. and But the thing is, he's a non-Power 5 conference guy. The last Power 5, non-Power 5 conference guy to win the Heisman Trophy was... You, in 1990. It's been 24 years. What does he legitimately have to do to garner some that kind of notoriety and to have a shot to be in New York? Well, I think first and foremost, just win games, you know, and, and play like he did uh, down the stretch uh, last year. You know, not go out there and try to do too much and try to win a, a Heisman Trophy. You go out and try to win a game, and uh, the snaps will naturally fall into place for you. So, um, you know, I had a chance to talk to him this summer at a Chad Lewis's charity golf tournament, and, uh, and we had a good conversation. And his head's in the right place. He just wants to go play, and they're going to, you know, kind of mix in some different things. And he's got uh, a little more say so in the offense now, kind of proven himself and uh, earned his stripes. So uh, I think he's really excited just to go play. And, uh, you know, whatever happens from there is just kind of icing on the cake. You know, for me, it wasn't go out and try to, you know, win a Heisman Trophy. It was try to go beat Miami and try to beat Washington State the next week and try to win games. And, yeah. and naturally, that position at BYU, you know, you're going to have the stats and the, the high-profile notoriety that they come with it if you're winning games and, and running the offense correctly. Ty, what was that conversation like with Taysom Hill? What kind of questions does he ask you? Um. You know, it was kind of back and forth. I was asking him, we're going to probably do a little more zone read on our offense uh, this year at my high school I'm coaching at. So I was picking his brain on kind of what he looks for and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, we just talked um, about the offense and, and how, you know, they're going to kind of restructure a little bit and they, the, the tools they have around him and things like that. So, you know, the, the pieces are in place. I think the schedule's in place. The, you know, it, it, it's not the toughest schedule in the world, but they've got a, a couple games mixed in there that uh, you beat a couple good teams like Boise and Texas, and uh, and you can make a name for yourself. So, uh, you know, it was it was good conversation, just kind of, you know, kind of bouncing things off of each other and, 
it's fun to, to talk to him because he's in a similar situation that I was going into my junior year. Ty Detmer on BYU Sports Nation, 1990 Heisman Trophy winner, member of the BYU Quarterback Factory. Ty, do you have your sideline passes established for that game in Austin, Texas yet? <laughs> I've got to make some calls. Hopefully I can get one. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling. It'll be fun to yeah. be a part of. I, <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling they'll let Texas you in. I will be ready. So, I it? hope so. You know, one side or the other, I'll be uh, – I'll be out there, but uh, <laughs> definitely be pulling for the Cougars. But uh, I do have a couple of UT connections if, if anything falls through with BYU, which I doubt that will. <laughs> Did anyone have more helmet stickers than you, Ty? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we gave them out pretty freely back then, I think. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was fun to kind of put them on each week and see what you ended up with at the end of the year. Ty Detmer with us on BYU Sports Nation broke 59 NCAA records, and I'm guessing probably had double that uh, in helmet stickers. Uh, when we're talking about Taysom Hill and, and the unique game that he brings, he obviously has an ability to run with his legs. We had Steve Young in studio on Friday, and he talked about the next level for Taysom will, will deal with what he can do while he is forced to stay in the pocket instead of running outside. Do you feel like that's where Taysom has to put his emphasis as well? Are you in agreement with Steve Young on that fact? Well, I don't know if it's put your emphasis there because each game's going to be different. And, um, you know, I, like I said earlier, we, we saw him kind of make strides in the passing game. And, and, again, part of that was the coaches figuring out what he does best and him getting comfortable and, and the new system. And, uh, and so, you know, I think with the receivers they've been able to bring in, the guys that are coming back, um, you know, it can be a this could be a, a really deadly combination to have some some real you know skill sets on the outside, some big guys that you can't really turn loose one on one, and then uh, and then you got to force Taysom to stay in the pocket and, and beat you throwing it. And I think he's proven that. You know, you look at the Houston game, and it was uh, real similar um, that way where he beat him with his arm and. Uh, you know, when you got a guy that, that's dangerous like that, you can't just lay off and play soft because he'll pick you apart. And if you try to come after him and he create a scene, you know, he'll gash you with his legs. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, we know he can run it, and that's just kind of a natural ability that you just see something and you take off. And the passing game obviously requires more precision and timing and, and reading the defenses and things like that. So, um uh, yeah, obviously he's going to feel more comfortable with a year under his belt really doing that and, and uh, hopefully start out the season the way he finished it. Ty, you're in Big 12 country uh, near the University of Texas. Uh, there's been conversations the past couple weeks about Bronco Mendenhall saying in the newspaper, Austin American Statesman, uh, we would love to be in the Big 12. Do you want to see BYU in the Big 12 at some point? You know, it's uh, you know, it's definitely enticing. I I would like it being in Texas. They play some games closer to home, but um, at the same time, you know, BYU is a different place, and I think being an independent uh, suits them pretty well right now. You know, you start, you get in a conference like that, and you're matching up with, uh, you know, some of the top teams of Baylor and Tech and Texas, and you know, you start going down the list, and it's a, it, you know, it's a grind every week. Um, and I know scheduling wise, uh, it makes it a lot easier for Tom Homo to mix in a few games, you know, uh, non conference games every year. But, um, you know, BYU is just a, a unique place with the standards that are required and, you know, the challenges that go into the recruiting part of it. Um, you know, but, but I think, I think everybody'd like to see them in a conference where you're playing for that conference championship and, and, uh, doing things like that. But, you got to be ready to go once you jump in. I mean, kind of look at Utah, you know, the last couple of years, they, all yeah. of a sudden they jump in the, the Pac-12, and it's like, man, I mean, it's, there's a kind of a curve there to catch up with the recruiting and all those things that you're jumping into a conference that's pretty well established and some teams that really have it going, and you got to try to compete with them right off the bat. Uh, you know, it may take you a year or two to – catch up uh, talent-wise to where you need to be with depth and all those things. Ty, it's been great to have you on BYU Sports Nation again. We have peppered you with questions, and you have succeeded. We award you a BYU Sports Nation helmet sticker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. I haven't had one of those in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get that to you very soon. In fact, we'll probably hand-deliver that to you at the game in Texas. <laughs>